Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss energy, heat, and molecule movement. Today's essential question, what is the relationship between energy, heat, and molecule movement? Make sure you fully answer the essential question in your summary. All right, let's start with a quick overview of energy. So energy is the capacity or ability to do work or produce heat. One type of energy is called kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, okay? So uh, movement, kinetic energy and movement are basically the same thing. So the more something is moving, the more kinetic energy it has. The more kinetic energy something has, the more it's moving, okay? And then we also have potential energy. In chemistry, potential energy is also known as chemical energy. This, this chemical energy, this potential energy is stored in the chemical bond. All right, let's do, talk a little bit more about kinetic energy. So atoms and everything that is made up of atoms contain kinetic energy. Remember, kinetic energy, the energy of movement. So why does everything have kinetic energy? Well, um, first of all, we talk about atoms. Remember that the electrons are always in, are in constant motion. They're always moving. So every atom has kinetic energy. Also, molecules themselves are in constant motions. All molecules are moving. Some are just barely vibrating and some are bouncing off the walls, but all mo molecules are in constant motion. So atoms, molecules, everything that's made up of atoms and molecules have kinetic energy. Okay. The amount of kinetic energy is directly related to the amount of molecule movement. Again, more kinetic energy, more movement. Less movement means less kinetic energy, okay? So molecules with the least amount of kinetic energy may just vibrate. They just barely vibrate. Where uh, molecules with more kinetic energy will move more, okay? All right, on to potential energy. In chemistry, potential energy is also known as is chemical energy. Um, that's because this type of energy is contained in the bonds that hold atoms together. So potential energy is stored in the atomic bonds. So when a bond is created, energy is used and stored. Um, so when you break a bond, you end up releasing energy. All right, let's talk about heat and temperature. Um, you really need to know the definitions of heat and temperature and also understand the differences between them. So heat is actually the sum of all the kinetic energy um, of the molecules in some sample of matter, okay? Um, so if you think about a, say we had a sample of matter, we had, we had a cup of water. If that water was warm or hot, let's say it was boiling, we would know that those molecules had a lot of kinetic energy. Actually, if you could see the molecules, they'd be racing all around the cup, running everywhere, bouncing off the walls, a lot of kinetic energy. If we had a cup of water that was really, really cold, I mean, maybe even icy, we would know that that sample of water had very low kinetic energy. The molecules are not moving very much, okay? So heat, again, is the sum of the kinetic energy. It's a measurement. Heat is a measurement of kinetic energy or molecule movement. Temperature, on the other hand, measures heat, okay? Um, so when temperature is measuring heat, what it's really doing is measuring the amount of molecule movement. So the faster the molecules in a sample are moving, the greater the kinetic energy, which means you're going to have more heat, which leads to a higher temperature. Okay. A little bit on energy, heat, and change. All changes, whether physical change or chemical change, um, involve a change in energy, and a change in energy means a change in heat, okay, which is measured by a change in temperature. So there needs to be a gain or loss of energy or a gain or loss in heat for any change to occur. All right, let's talk a little bit about exothermic reactions. An exothermic reaction is a reaction in which there is a release of heat, okay? So the a heat is a product in an exothermic reaction. So as an example, we'll use a combustion reaction. If we had two C3H6s and we add a couple O2s to that, 
This is a combustion reaction, right? So our products are going to be 3CO2 plus 4H2O. Now, a combustion reaction means, you guys know what that means, hopefully. It means like fire, right? So we need to have heat as well. There's a product. So heat is also one of the products of a combustion reaction. Um, thus, the combustion reaction has to be exothermic. Heat is let off into the environment. That's why it's a product. It's, move, it's flying away. So the environment surroundings are going to feel warm. Okay? Because when heat is a product, the heat doesn't just sit there. It's, it, it, it floats into the environment. So if you have an exothermic reaction going on, you're going to feel heat. Okay? Because the environment is getting warmer. So the individual products of, of an um, exothermic reaction are actually cooler than the reactants because heat is a product and it's actually being lost into the environment. Which means that the products of an exothermic reaction have less kinetic energy than the reactants because they have less heat. Okay? And last we have endothermic reaction. An endothermic reaction is a reaction that absorbs or uses heat. Okay? And that means that heat is one of the reactants. So, for example, if we're going to take H2O, if we want to turn that into steam, right, um, which is H2 and O2, we're going to end up, we have to use heat, right? So heat is one of the reactants. And our products are then going to be H2 plus O2. Okay? Um, now, heat is absorbed from the environment. Okay, that's where this heat, where does the heat come from? This heat comes from the environment, from what, whatever area the, the reaction is taking place. So heat is being stolen from the environment, which makes the surround feel cool. So if you're actually touching an endothermic reaction, what you're, actually, you're not actually touching the reaction. You're not touching the molecules. You're touching the area that the molecules are in. So you're going to actually feel coolness. Okay. The products of an exothermic reaction will actually be warmer in temperature than that of the reactants, okay? So the products of an endothermic reaction will have more kinetic energy than the reactants because heat was, had to be added to the reactants, okay? And that is it for today.